Amen, amen, family. Can we give God a hand clap praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good. God is so great, family. Go ahead and take a seat. Go ahead and take a seat. Mm. Well, good morning and God bless you, Shiloh family. I am blessed and so thankful to be among you mighty men and women of God this morning. I pray you all came here eager and excited for some of that fresh bread today, because I got some fresh bread today. It's my honor and my privilege to serve you all today. Uh, we're going to be having communion today after uh, uh, today, as well as our Shiloh family fellowship downstairs at the end of service, as Bishop just told you. So I don't plan to be before you too long, but what I have prepared for you, I do believe it will, uh, uh, it will edify the body and position us for greater victory as we move forward into all the Lord has in store for us in 2024. With that being said, let's open up in prayer and then we'll dive right in. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for this wonderful day, Lord God. This is the day that you have made, and we will continue to rejoice in it, Lord God. It is an honor and a privilege to be in your house, to be with my brothers and sisters, your children. Lord, we thank you, Lord. What, what love you have bestowed upon us that we could be called your children, Lord God. We thank you right now. And Lord, we just invite you in, Lord God. Have your way in and through us, Lord God. You are welcome to us, Lord God. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would help me and us decrease so that you can increase in and through us, Lord. I pray that you would guard our hearts and our minds from corruption and error, that you would guard our hearts and our minds from anything that's not of you, from you, by you, or for you, Lord God. We pray that your word, word would have free course in our hearts and our minds, that it may bring the transformation that's needed for us to walk this walk for your glory, Lord God. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives individually and all that you're doing right here at Shiloh Christian Center. And Lord, we just will be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, family. All right, family. This is the first week of the new year, according to the Gregorian calendar, it is 2024. Now we've been celebrating the year 5784 according to the Hebrew calendar since September, so praise the Lord for that. In any case, every day is a brand new day and a brand new opportunity for us to learn the lessons from yesterday. And if we apply the wisdom that we've gained, we should be able to ensure a better tomorrow for us and for the ones who depend on us. Lamentations 3, 22 through 24 says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Right. Because his compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion and my soul. Uh, therefore, I will hope, says my soul, therefore, I will hope in him. Have you put your hope in him? Have you put your trust in him? Hallelujah. His faithfulness is great. His mercies endure, endure forever. His compassions do not fail. And it's because of that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Being that it is a new year, we have a whole list of new topics that I'm excited to cover in our Shiloh sermon series for this year, but I have the honor of kicking off this first topic, and our topic for the month of January is family. Family. Now, family is a very important topic. It's important to God, and it's definitely important to us here at Shiloh Christian Center. Now, the word family may hold more weight for some than it does for others. Some of us live by the principle blood is thicker than water. And some of us say blood makes you related, but loyalty makes you family. But some of us have been so hurt, neglected, rejected, and let down by family that the very thought of family makes your temperature rise and your blood boil. If that last one describes you, I want to take this moment to say I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. I want to apologize on behalf of everyone who's hurt you. And I pray that God's supernatural healing power would permeate your soul right now in Jesus' name to heal your broken heart and to set you free from bondage to anger, to pain, to guilt, and to shame. And I pray that he softens your heart that you may be able to experience, that you may be open to experience the true love and family the way he created it to be. Yes, in his sovereignty, the Lord allows these things to happen because he has given us all the freedom to choose whether we want to do things according to his commands and his instructions or whether we want to do things our own way. Unfortunately, including a lot of our parents and grandparents, the majority of us didn't know to or didn't want to acknowledge the Lord in all our ways and to allow him to direct our paths. We just wanted what we wanted and we wanted it exactly how we wanted it right now. Most of us didn't know or didn't care that doing things our own way would have a serious negative effect on those who are attached to us, even to future generations. Watch this. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 through 6, we see that the first two of the Ten Commandments given to the children of Israel after they were delivered out of bondage in the land of Egypt. As they were beginning their new relationship with the Lord, he told them this. Number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Uh -huh. And number two, you shall not make for yourselves any graven image or any, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that, that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. And you shall not bow yourself down to them nor serve them for I the Lord your God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments now let me run this back because it's something here that it's important for you to see the Lord warned the children of Israel that if they chose to embrace other gods, that there would be consequences that would negatively impact their children and future generations. These consequences would be the natural effect of doing things contrary to God's way. Let me, let me make this clear. God's jealousy had nothing to do with insecurity or instability. It was about his love and his care for you, yes. knowing that these other gods had no love and care for you at all. He knew that these other gods were contrary spirits that would lead you away from him and, and the good things that he has for you. He knew like they knew that apart from him, there is no true blessing, only curses. If he is life, to be apart from him is death. If he is light, to be apart from him is darkness. If he is truth, to be apart from him is deception. If he is freedom, to be apart from him is bondage. If he is the source of all blessing, to be without him is a curse. And everybody who follows you away from him is cursed with you. Yes, yes. That's good. The Lord warned them that he would visit the iniquity or bring the wickedness of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate him. Number one, that word hate in Hebrew is sane, which means to detest or to turn away from or to make yourself an enemy of. So those that would turn away from him, those that reject him, those that would despise him, those that would detest him, the natural effect of turning away from God is that it gets darker and darker the further you get away. If the presence of God is the fullness of life, the fullness of blessings, when you turn away from him and you go after the contrary, it's going to become a curse. 
to you and to everybody that's with you. God doesn't have to curse you. The very fact that he said right here is blessings. Everything contrary is a curse. When you have chosen to separate yourself from God and from the counsel of God, you're leading yourself and everybody else that follows you under a curse. Number two, notice that he said the iniquity, the sin, the rebellion, the wickedness, the foolishness of the fathers, not the mothers, not the siblings, not the neighbors, not the community, but the father's choices would impact their children and even their children's children up to four generations. Family, that is a heavy responsibility. Men, I hope you're listening to me. This is a heavy responsibility and one that should not be taken lightly. The problem is too many boys have taken on the title of a man without being one. Too many men have taken on the responsibility of a husband or a father without knowing and understanding the terms and conditions before agreeing to it. And because of it, our world is in shambles. Women and children are being abandoned, left to fend for themselves, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. They are being taken advantage of and abused by wolves and snakes because their covering had no covering. Many men decided to call themselves leaders without any care or any clue where they were going. Some of us did it in ignorance. Some of us did it in negligence. Some of us did it in arrogance. But in either case, we, what we did was out of order and many are suffering because of it. Yes, yes. My God. Now you may be thinking, Pastor, why are you going so hard on the men today? The women are out of pocket too, right? Tell me, please. I agree. I agree. I agree. Come on now. Listen. Yes, yes. The women are out of pocket too. But gentlemen, please hear my heart. God knows I'm saying what I'm saying in love. I'm trying to empower you. I'm trying to empower you as a husband to a husband, as a father to a father, as a brother to a brother, as a man to a man. I want nothing more than to see you win, to see you blessed, to see you prosper in all that you do and for your family to be blessed with you. We're talking about family today, but it starts with the head. It starts with the husband. It starts with the father. Family, this is coming from a man who did it all wrong. This is coming from a man who did it all out of order. One who has been on both sides of the fence. One who had to suffer because of the iniquities of my father. And just the same, my wife and my children have suffered because of my iniquities. Brothers, I know this is heavy, but it's necessary. This is a wake-up call, a cry in the spirit. Brothers, the king is coming, and his reward and his recompense is with him. Yes. How is he going to meet you? Is he going to meet you with judgment and rebuke, or is he going to meet you with open hands? with open arms to embrace you and to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Does that bother you? Does that scare you? Does that concern you? That you could encounter the Lord on bad terms, depending on where you're standing right now. And the future of your children, the future of your family rides on you setting the, setting the pace, yes. setting the tone, yes. laying the foundation. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. 
Last week I mentioned in 1 Peter 4.17, which says the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And when judgment comes, the Lord always starts from the top down. That's why when they fell in Eden, the Lord said, Adam, where are you? He didn't go to Eve and say, what's happening? He said, Adam, where are you? Because I established you over your wife and over your family. I established you over that which is mine to manage and maintain it. Adam, where are you? That's why when the Lord sent the prophets to confront Israel, he sent them to address the men, the husbands, the fathers first. He sent them to address the priests and the prophets, the religious leaders who had taken the responsibility of shepherding the flock. This is why when Jesus came, he hit the house of God as early as 12 years old to let his presence be known and felt among the teachers, leaving them astonished and amazed. He began his ministry in the synagogue, declaring Isaiah 61 in the very light of his presence, shook up and exposed and made manifest that which was contrary to the will of God among the leadership. Throughout his earthly ministry, even to the end, he confronted the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scholars, the teachers, the pastors, the leaders, the fathers, and he made it really uncomfortable for anyone that was out of place and out of order. And it forced them to make a decision. In this confrontation today, it is going to force you to make the same decision. Either they had to get it together or they had to get rid of him. Unfortunately, they chose the latter. Unfortunately for them, they chose the latter. About two years ago, the Lord told me this. Either they're going to love Jesus or they're going to hate me when I speak. When I bring the word, either they're going to love Jesus or they're going to hate me. And if they hate me, it's because they hate him. The words that I'm speaking to you is by the spirit of God, from the love of God, because God is calling you up. He's calling you up. He's calling you forward. He's calling you deeper. There's more for you than what you're settling for. The enemy wants to draw you away with candy and trinkets and things to distract you and keep your attention and keep you from being the man that God has called you to be. And because of it, the people who have been entrusted to you are suffering. Ask me how I know, because I was that man. Before they got a chance to get rid of him, he called them on their hypocrisy, their vanity, their pride, and their abuse of power. And he told them in Matthew 15, 13 through 14, every plant which my father has not planted, my heavenly father has not planted, shall be rooted up. Leave them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the pit. I believe that this was this confrontation was a gift of grace and an act of mercy upon the men in positions of leadership to repent and to get things in order before it was too late. Can you not tell that time is running out? Can you not tell that the end is near? Can you not see the signs of the times? The things that are being exposed, the things that are going on in the church, it is obvious. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31 through 32 says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Part of judging ourselves is acknowledging the areas we know we got it wrong. Yes. Acknowledging the areas that we know we could be doing better. Acknowledging the reality that we may need help in some areas. 
Acknowledging the possibility that we have some blind spots that we've been overlooking. Brothers, our families are waiting for that kind of humility. That's a heart that God can work miracles in. That's a heart that God can establish order in and through. Gentlemen, you have been blessed to be the head of the household. You've been blessed to be the head of the household. Now that's a weighty responsibility, especially in light of all that I just got done saying. But trust me, it is a blessing from the Lord when it's done the Lord's way. Yes. The only time it seems to be more of a burden than a blessing is when you've done it your own way and when you're doing it in your own strength. I know because a large, large majority of my husbandhood and my fatherhood, I did just that. Everything I built was on a faulty foundation before Christ came into my life. The wind and the waves, they hit and they hit hard. All that was left was a skeleton of a house and it's only by the grace of God that it didn't all crumble around me. In Matthew 7, 24 through 27, Jesus said this, Therefore, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, they shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and the fall of it was great. I need you to know that the wind is going to blow, the waves are going to come, it's going to be tested one way or the other. My question to you is what foundation have you built your life upon, your marriage upon? your family upon. I'm walking with brothers right now who just went through it and are picking up the pieces of whatever's left, trying to build again in faith, but this time on the rock that won't budge. But it's not easy. It wasn't easy for me. It's not easy for them. Watching them struggle to pick up the pieces watching them struggle to even have enough faith to believe that it's possible to stand again. Men, as the head of the household, the Lord has, has to begin with you so he can establish order from the top down so blessings can flow as they should to the rest of the body. That's the order of God that it runs from the top down. Let me say this though, if you're gonna be a head, you have to have a head. If you're gonna be a head, you have to have a head. A headless body is a dead one. Mm. And you can't be a covering without a covering. That's how the Lord designed it to work, and that's how the Lord ordained it to flow. He doesn't tell you, just tell you what to do. He leads by example and expects you to do the same for those he has entrusted to you. Yes, yes, good work. Family, this is about family. Yes. But we have to start with the first thing. We have to start from the top so that everything else can fall in place. Because if you get the whole train in order, but the engine's not there, it ain't going nowhere. You have to have the engine in place and the engine has to know where it's going for you to attach the rest of the cars to it so that it can be successful in its mission. I want us to take a look again at Exodus chapter 20, verse five through six because there's a key to the mercy, the favor, and the blessings of the Lord that I do not want you to miss. 
Verse 5 said, You shall not bow yourself down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. But it doesn't end there. Verse 6 says, And showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This is beautiful because the same way that I said turning away from God leads to darkness, leads to death, leads to curses, leads to heartbreak, leads to heartache, leads to discontentment. When you turn to God, when you turn back around and face him, when you start going towards him, you start walking towards light, towards love, towards peace, towards blessing, towards favor, towards goodness, towards all the things that God created you to experience and to be able to give your children. See over here, when they were in bondage in Egypt, all they could give their children was bondage. They didn't own anything to give their children. They didn't even have, they, they lacked everything they needed to give their children. And their children cried out in future generations because the fathers had, had, had despised or, or neglected that blessing that they had. And they gave it all over to an enemy who oppressed them, who abused them, who forced them to work with rigor so that they cried out in their distress. Now, I understand that I came down heavy upon the men today, but as the ones that God has ordained to be the head of the household, if you only understood the power that he entrusted you with to affect to impact and to shape the future and the world around us, you would understand why the enemy fights against us so hard. Our adversary understands that if you disconnect the head from the body, everything else falls to the ground. The Lord wants to empower you and reestablish you back to your rightful positions as the head of the household for his glory, for the good of those that depend on you, and for the advancement of the kingdom of God. It has been said that families are the bedrock of the family, of the families, that fathers are the bedrock of the family, and families are the bedrock of society. Christ is the bedrock of it all, and it's high time that we get back in position according to God's perfect order so that we can see the beauty uh, that, of what the Lord designed family to be and to do. Family is supposed to be a light that shines in the world. It should give them a desire. My goodness. So many people are disgusted with family because it's so dysfunctional. Because it's so out of order. There's people that I don't, I don't, even, I don't even want a family. I just want to have my fun. There's so many. I, oh, my goodness. Yes. I saw this, this video of this... Uh, Jamaican man and he, he was prideful that he had I believe it was 19 kids and 22 baby mothers he said real bad man in pride I'm like my goodness man all I could think about all I could think about is these children that don't have a father that don't have a covering that don't have a leader, yes. that have nowhere to turn, that are raised by the streets, you know what I'm saying? That are misled about what it means to be a man because yes. the man that chose to be their father in his, in his foolishness yes. abandoned them and left them to figure it out for themselves. I was sitting with Zion the other day and we were watching TV and he was cuddled up to me and, and I just, my heart broke because I didn't get that when I was a kid. I wasn't, I wasn't raised with my father. You know what I'm saying? I had my adopted father, but, but he was busy doing his own thing. You know what I'm saying? And it's, a, and it's a messed up thing because if fathers are not there, 
that can affect kids negatively, yes. terribly. But it's another thing too when fathers are there, but they're too hard, they're too tough, they're too rough to love them. Why? Because they've been given a bad example of what a man is. They think that a man is just some brolic, rude, you know what I'm saying, a uh, uh, tough guy who can't show affection, who can't show compassion, who can't show love. But the fact that I was able to embrace my son, the fact that he was so comfortable laying on me, just watching TV, the fact that when I come upstairs or when I come into the house, he comes running to me or he goes straight to the couch and slaps the seat telling me to come sit down because he wants to be with me. But I thought, man, what if I wasn't there? What if I wasn't there? My sons are already influenced by the world anyways, and I'm there, I'm a present father. I lead them in the way that they should go, and it's already a world having a major impact on them. I'm fighting against it, and I'm trying to keep them in line and keep them uh, 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 with the vision of what they're supposed to be. But what if I wasn't there? What would my family be? What would come of my kids? What man would be trying to, to assert his dominance over my wife and show her, you know what I'm saying, what a man is? When it's my responsibility, I was entrusted with the responsibility to show her what a man is, to show them what a man is, to show them what a husband is, a father is. It's nobody's responsibility but mine. Once again, it's been said that the fathers are the bedrock of the family, and families are the bedrock of society, and Christ is the bedrock of it all. Let me leave you with this, though. Ezekiel chapter 18 tells us that the iniquity of the fathers no longer fall upon the sons, nor does the iniquity of the sons fall upon the fathers. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Every individual is responsible for their own choices and the consequences thereof. The soul that sins is the soul that shall die. Yes. This is powerful because no matter where you came from, no matter what your upbringing was like, no matter what your father was like, you have been given the option and the opportunity in Christ to break the cycle and to set a new trajectory for you, for your children, and for your children's children. The book that I'm currently reading sets a distinction between proactive people and reactive people. Proactive people are controlled by their internal values, and reactive people are controlled by external stimuli. It says that it's the nature of reactive people to absolve themselves of responsibility. It's so much safer to say, I am not responsible. If I am responsible, I might have to say that I'm irresponsible. But it also says that until a person can deeply and honestly say, I am what I am today because the choices that I made yesterday, that person cannot choose otherwise. As long as it's everybody else's fault and everybody else's problem, you give everybody else the power to dictate and determine the course of your future. In taking responsibility and accountability for you and yours, God can empower you to do all that he created you to do as the head of household, to lead by example and to be a blessing to your family and an example to the families around you. And when they ask, why are you so blessed when they ask why is things seem to go the, uh, your way why does it seem like the light is shining where you're at you can say it's because I met this man named Jesus yeah.
And when I met this man named Jesus, he set everything in order. He made the crooked path straight. He taught me how to be a leader. He taught me how to be a father. He taught me how to be a man. He taught me how to love. He taught me how to serve. He taught me how to be selfless. He taught me how to be sacrificial. He taught me how to love God and how to love my neighbor as myself. And because of it, I am a blessing to the world around me because he showed me what it means to be a blessing. Family, your family is waiting for you to be the ones he has called you to be, especially you men. It's time that we step up. It's time that we step forward. And it's time that we be the head of the household. Let's give God a hand clap praise. Amen. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your word, Lord God. We pray that you would guard your word in our hearts, that we may not sin against you and we may not sin against one another, Lord God. We pray that you would bring clarity to our sight, that you would increase our understanding, Lord God, and our desire for you, Lord, that we may uh, establish order, Lord, and allow you to establish order in our lives first, Lord God, that we can be the example we need to be to the world around us, Lord God. God, of what your love, your grace, and your family looks like, Lord God. I thank you for all the men, the husbands, and the fathers under the sound of my voice right now, Lord. I pray that you would touch them, that you would move them closer to you than ever before. Lord, I pray over the children right now, anyone that doesn't have their father, Lord God. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would heal their heart right now and that you would draw them near to you, that they can not perpetuate what their fathers did, Lord, but that they can be the example for their future generations of what a godly, loving father looks like, that they can experience what I've experienced with my sons uh, uh, and with Zion, that I could just embrace him and sit with him and see the, the joy and the contentment of having his father with him, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing here at Shiloh Christian Center. I thank you for the heart for family that you've given us, Lord God. We love you and we love your will for families, Lord God. We pray that you're that your favor would be upon us, Lord, this year, and that we would be able to have a great impact on families from this day and in generations to come, Lord God, that they would see that this is a house that values families. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing, what you're done, and what you plan to do. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to ShilohHub.com. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.